my brothers, my sisters, family, friends. Once again, it's such a privilege to be alive, to share the word of God. Nothing I can think of is more important than to share the bread of life. This bread of life will sustain us not only in this world, but also in the world to come. This bread of life is free. We don't have to purchase it. All we have to do is just ask. And God will continue to feed the bread of life and give us that living water. <laughs> Today it's a day we're going to share and reflect back on the life of a man, a well-known man. Every time I <clears throat> think and meditate on this story, my heart becomes overwhelmed to see how a human being, just like you and I, were able to go through everything Satan had thrown to him. And he held his faith. He held his integrity. Hebrew told me that the name Job means one that grieves and mourns. Persecuted, hated. At this time when Job experienced the wealth of God, the blessings of God, lived in the land of ours. His qualities, he was a good and honest man who respect God and avoid evil. He was religious. The Bible said he was perfect perfect in the sense of blameless, just, and upright. He was perfect, but he was not sinless. Because Romans 3.23 said, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. The Lord will always have his remnant in all areas of the earth. If you ever live in a lifetime, in this lifetime when it seems that everyone had gone their own way and not paying any attention to God, I want you to know there is someone or a group who will always, always be mindful of God. Proverbs 9 and 10 tells us, he said, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. This man feared God. I want you to bear in mind throughout this whole message that we're talking about 
a human being just like you and I. No different. He feared God. And because he feared God, Solomon told us that when we fear God, that is the beginning of wisdom. And the knowledge of his Holy One is understanding. Also in Proverbs 16 and 6 says, by mercy and truth, integrity is heard. And by the fear of the Lord, man depart from evil. One may say, well, I fear God. You may be thinking that we are scared of him. But if we fear him, that means we reverence God. And if we reverence God, we will shun all evil. Job was an upright man in all his dealings with God and with man. God had really blessed him. He was prosperous according to voice three. 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen, 500 female donkeys, and a large number of servants. It's amazing. Seven sons and three daughters. He was the greatest and the richest in the East. This shows me that Proverbs 10 and 20 says, the blessings of the Lord make it rich and he add no sorrows with it. He was prosperous and yet pious showing reverence to Almighty God. Verse 5 tells me that after his children, his seven sons, and his three daughters, after their feasting, Job will summon them to his house and make a burnt offering for each one of them. For each one of them. This in the event Job said they had sin during their feasting and drinking. He's now making a burnt offering on their behalf showing that he was fulfilling a priestly duty. So dad, don't ever forget. And presenting your children or child before the Lord. Continue to cover them in prayer. Presenting them before the Lord interceding on their behalf, whether they are saved or unsaved. His wealth, what God had blessed him with, had opened up a platform for him to bless others. It did not make him selfish, uplifted, arrogant, full of pride, or mean. It's amazing. 
the Lord blessed him with wisdom and wealth, but caused him to be powerful and honored in the country in which he lived. All blessings comes from the Lord. Is this a blessing message or prosperity message? No. Relentless faith. Keep in mind, Job fear God and shun evil. But note, this did not exempt him from the calamities of human life, especially under divine approval, such as in his case. Everything was going good with Job. Life was great. Children was blessed. Servants, a great number of animals, over 11,000. Can you imagine that? So he had to have a lot of servants to take care of these animals. God had blessed him. But not knowing what lies ahead, that's why you and I always have to have relentless faith in God. Because we don't know what lies ahead. We don't even know what this day will bring forward before the sunset. But you and I are called to shun evil and do good to those who despitefully even used us. In verse six, he said, now there was a day where God himself, the day had arrived. Poor brother Job didn't even know. But the day had arrived. What had arrived, but no. When the sons of God, the divine being, Genesis 6 and 2 even talk about the sons of God, came and present themselves before the Lord. And Satan also came among them. This is interesting. the sons of God presenting themselves to the Lord. And I will wonder in my mind, how is it that these sons of God did not kick him out of their presence? But God had allowed him to appear along with his the sons of his. God did not excommunicate him out of his presence. But look what happened. Look what happened. This event what is about to take place You notice that the enemy still have access to God, requesting things, asking for permission, to reap havoc on his people.
in Revelation 12 and 9 says, And the great dragon was cast out, the old serpent, called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth. He was cast out into the earth. And his angels were cast out with him. John the Revelator was placed on the Isle of Patmos. God had showed him this revelation. Verse 10, Revelation 12 and 10, he says, And I heard a voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of the brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. How many times Satan went to the Father, accusing us of wrongdoing? While they were before the Lord God, the Lord said to Satan, from where do you came from? Satan answered the Lord, look, watch this. From going to and fro on the earth and walking Backward and forward on it. That's the revised King James. To and fro in the earth. Walking backward and forward. That's why I we are reminded to be careful. Because Satan, the adversary, is looking, is searching for whom he made a vow. Then the Lord said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job? There is none like him on the earth. Great God from side. This really struck me. God the eternal Conversating with the falling angel, he said, There is none like Job on the earth. A blameless and upright man, and who fear God and shun evil. Great God from Zion. Blameless, upright, fair God, shun evil. That pleased God. The Lord glorify himself by pointing to Job as a creature of his redemptive grace. So Satan answered the Lord and said, does Job fear God for nothing? Think about this. This is a conversation going on in the eternal, up in heaven, in the presence of Almighty God, about an individual that exists and lives on the earth. Don't you think this is still going on? How many times? Let me repeat it. He went before the Lord, asking the Lord to deal with us. 
chapter 1, Job 1 and 10 says, he said, have you not made a hedge around him? This is what Satan said to God. you got an edge of protection around him. Not only him, but his household. And all that he has on every side. You protecting it, God. You have blessed the work of his hands and his possessions have increased in the land. Satan say what God is doing in the life of Job. Watch this. The edge. A divine barrier. That Satan could not penetrate. You and I need that divine barrier around us, my brothers. So that you and I will be able to withstand the fiery dark of the wicked. That's why the apostle Paul said, put on the whole armor, which we shared the last time we met. Because this adversary, he wants to take us out. If he tried it with Job, so will he try it with us. And as he continued to speak in verse, uh, in, uh, in, in verse 11, he said, now, but now, he says, stretch out your hands. Listen now. And touch all that he has. And he will surely curse you to your face. What? You hear what Satan told or telling God Almighty? The one who knows the heart of man? The one who created him? He said, yeah, 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 he, he's serving you, yeah, yeah, he's serving you because you blessed him, everything you, you, you just, everything, I mean, he was so, he's, I mean, he's overflowing with those three goods. You take it away. In other words, trust what I'm saying. You take it away and he will kiss you. He will blaspheme you. To your face. You see why you and I got to be careful. Not to put. I trust the nightly goods. Satan challenge God. Challenge him. This request was made in heaven. Poor brother Job, let's say poor brother Job, or rich brother Job, however we want to address it. Brother Job didn't even have the hoggiest idea what was going on. Didn't even know his name was being called. Verse 12, chapter 1, he said, And the Lord said to Satan, Behold, look, all that he has is in your hand. Everything I blessed him with, now I'm going, it's in your hand. Oh my God. Mm. To me, that's scary. What do you mean? Right now, the enemy is asking the father to rip everything. Let me handle him. Let me handle him. He's worshiping you, he's preaching, he's praying, he's shouting, they're fasting. Let me put that to the test. And see if he will not fall or she will not fall. All that he has in the power of your hand. But only do not lay 
a hand on his person. Don't touch him, but everything he have, I turn it over to you. I'm just saying here that he left. Oh boy, now he's on a ball. He's on a mission to carry out, to prove to God. But the Job was only serving him because of his blessings. Divine endorsement from heaven. That is the only reason why Satan can deal with you and I if he get that endorsement from heaven. Verse 13 says, Now there was a day when the sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine. Now you know that's good wine. They were eating good because they were rich. Eating good, drinking good, living good. Not knowing what lies ahead. In the eldest house, And the messenger came at the same time while they were feasting, while they were having a good time, and came to Job and approached him and he says, the oxen were plowing and the donkeys feeding beside them. They were doing their work. Plowing the field. The donkeys were eating. Everything was normal. And the sevens rise. Came. Out of nowhere and took them away. Not only confiscate the oxen and the donkeys, but turn around and slew the servants. That portion now is gone. Tragedy number one. Can you think about it? At the rising of the sun, that would have been the last thought on Job's mind. Not knowing what's going on while that seven were talking. Relating the story, the next one came in. And he said, the fire of God from heaven burn up the sheep and the servants and consume them. And I alone have escaped to tell you. Burn up the sheep. Burn them up. Some theologians said it was lightning. Servant declared as fire from heaven. This time no one stole them. The fire consumed them. Tragedy number two. Now think about it. Tragedy one was enough. Now here's the second one. And while he was relating, 
the servant who brought the first message, standing on the side, listening to the second one, and the second one relating the message about the sheep being consumed. Now the third one came in. Lord have mercy. He said the Chaldeans had three groups of people. Raided the camels and took them away. And slay, kill the servants. Just I escape alone to tell you tragedy number three. Tell me, being a human being, hearing all this, and this was your wealth, or my wealth, what would be going through the mind? And when people seeing this, even your church family, missionary, you'll have more prophet and prophetess coming to tell you what's happened to you. You didn't do this right, and you didn't do that right, and you didn't say that right, and you didn't praise God right, and all sorts of things, not knowing what was going on. That's why you have to intercede to God on your behalf. Man, that's some news to accept. Oxen gone, donkeys gone, servants gone, sheep gone. Whew. Man, and while he was talking, Another one came in. Read God from Zion. He said, your sons and your daughters were eating and drinking wine in the elder's house. And suddenly a great wind came Across the wilderness. Now you know if the wind was coming across the wilderness, man, that had to have some 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 sand and some leaves and some all sorts of sticks coming, rolling, 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 rolling towards that house. And struck the four corners of the house, and it fell upon the young people, and they all Die. Painful memories. They even think about the storm in 2019 that passed through Abaco and the Grand Bahama Islands. That wind, that wind, that wind. Can you imagine Job's sons and daughters in that house and just hearing that? I don't know if they heard that wind coming, but it, it, it hit, he said it hit the four corners of the house. The house collapsed and they got crushed. How many house was crushed? How many lives were crushed? And Abaco and Grand Mahama during that storm. But 185 miles an hour wind blowing across the roof of those homes, thumping. So those of us who went through that hurricane No doubt you could have, have a under, little understanding what those kids went through before the house collapsed. I 
and according to the documentation, that Hurricane Doreen that hit Abaco and Grand Bahama says this the strongest wind at landfall on record in the Atlantic Ocean. Great God from Zion. Seven sons and three daughters, all at one time wiped out. There are mothers in Grand Mahama and also in Abaco who can testify that their home were destroyed and their children was destroyed with it. You see why we need to have relentless faith in God. And look, all this destruction was in the hands of Satan. God did not intervene because he said, all what he has is in your hand. So he could not intervene because he would have gone against his word. They come to kill, steal, and destroy. He's doing the very same thing now. Let me move on real quickly. Everything Job had was wiped out. It's amazing. In chapter two, there's someone who was still there with him. The only thing he left with is his wife and where he was at. Everything else gone. He rose and tore his robe and shaved his head. Watch this now. And he fell to the ground and worshiped God. If you tell me. And that's not relentless faith and belief in the God whom he trusts. And show me what was relentless. He opened up his mouth and said, naked I came from my mother's womb and naked shall I return. The Lord gives and the Lord take it away. He blessed be the name of the Lord. And all that God, Job still blessed the Lord. That was you and I, what we would have done? What would we have done? I guess our minds would have been so mixed up to listening to these prophets and people having a good time to know that the wealth has been gone. Which had nothing to do with you, nothing to do with Job. So remember my brothers and sisters, the things that are happening in your life have nothing to do with you, but hold on to God on changing hands. God knows exactly what he's doing. Great God from Zion. He said, in all this, Job did not sin, nor did he charge God wrong. Satan had failed. Failed to cause Job to curse God because 
That's what he had intended to do to make Job cleave God and Oh, Lord, have mercy. Then he would have been able to go back to God and say, I told you so. But God knew the heart of Job. He knew that Job didn't have material things to his heart. He knew that Job had served him sincerely and Job had loved him. So he knew he could have depended on Job. Although he said, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Not only that in chapter two. This is interesting. <laughs> Listen, the enemy will not stop until we cross over. Let me do that real quick. Let me read it. Chapter two. He said, I, <clears throat> again, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, you'll think it's the same thing. No, it's not. And Satan came among them to present them himself before the Lord. Still have access to the Lord. And the Lord said to Satan, from where do you come from? Satan answered and said, from going to and fro on the earth and from walking backward and forward. He's doing the same thing before he destroyed Job, material things. Now he's still doing the same thing now after he destroyed Job. He have not changed. Then the Lord said to him, have you considered my servant Job that there is none like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man, instead of, and all that Job did not sin, He's still blameless. He's still upright with God, still depending on God. So look at what he says. Look here. Look what God says. And one who fear God and shun evil. God is saying the same thing about Job. Can he say that about us? And still he held fast to his integrity. Although you have incited me against him. You hear what he says? To destroy him without a cause. Chapter 2, verse 4. So Satan answered the Lord and said, Skin for skin. Yes, all that a man has will give for his life. But stretch forth your hands now and touch his bones and his flesh. And he will surely curse you to your face again. Oh, Jesus, have mercy here, Lord. Mm. My brothers and my sisters. Hmm. Let's pray. Keep the faith. Satan did it to Job. He will do it again. And the Lord said to Satan, Behold, he is in your hands, O Lord, but spared his life. And Satan went out in the presence of the Lord and struck Job with painful boils from the sole of his feet to the crown of his head. The only thing he couldn't do with him is to kill him. His friends sympathized with him. It got so bad, so bad, Job cursed the day he was born. How much a man could dig? He will not put more on you and I than what we can bear. Job could have bear it. And the father was pleased with him. Can he be pleased with us? Would he be pleased with us? We go through a little persecution. And we want to give up. Later on down the chapter, 
His wife came up to him after seeing all the suffering. He said, you still hold your integrity. Please go and die. Now, wait a minute. I wonder why Satan did not destroy Job wife when he destroyed the children. I wonder why. Didn't he have in mind that he had something for her to do? He used her. My brothers and my sisters, sisters, be careful. Jo listen, 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 listen to me. I'm going to close on this note here. Satan used Eve. Satan used your wife. Be careful. Satan want to use you, woman. Listen to bring destruction on this earth. Not only the woman now, he want to use us as men. But listen, let us hold to God's unchanging hand. I'm going to close. Job rebuked her. Job recognized. Hey, Chris, God, where am I going? When he knew, where can I go from the presence of the Lord? If I ascend to heaven, thou art there. If I go into the lowest part of the earth, thou art there. My brothers and sisters, that's why Jesus, oh Lord have mercy, Jesus had warned Peter. He said, Simon, Simon, Satan desired to sift you like wheat, but I have prayed for you. Thank God for Jesus praying for Peter. Jesus continued to pray for us. My brothers and my sisters, I'm going to close and I pray today. Whatever come our way, let's trust the Lord. Have that relentless faith and believe that God will take us through. God will take care of us. Have that faith. Have that belief in him that he is able. He's not asleep. He's wide awake. And he knows the intention of the adversary. He told us clearly, clearly, in John 10, 10, he come to kill, steal, and destroy. That's the enemy. But Jesus came that we may have life and have it more abundantly. I pray today let us do nothing to give the door open to Satan so he can have that approval to put us through what he did with Brother Job. Let's continue to pray. Let's continue to believe. Let's continue to fast. Because the adversary, the devil, round sticking whom he made about, is like a roaring light. But thank God for Jesus. Thank God for the Holy Spirit, who is here to govern, to lead, guide, and direct. If we would only heed and listen to me. Let us pray. Father, today we thank you for your love. We thank you for your grace. May you, O oh Lord, be glorified in our lives living. Help us, Lord, that when we go through our trials, God, we don't know, we may not know whether Satan or you have given up him the approval, but of Father, I pray that we will do nothing that will excite him and give him the privilege, oh Lord, that he will destroy us. Thank you for dying for us. Thank you for keeping us. 
Thank you for preserving us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.